The army only entered the Amarula Lodge in Palma long after those trapped here had fled. Survivors told us of a terrifying three days under fire, surrounded by militants and left to fend for themselves. Among them were these two South Africans, Wes on the left and his older brother Adrian. Dad, lie down. This footage, filmed by Wes on his phone, shows them taking cover in the hotel, where nearly 200 people had taken refuge. His brother is lying in front of his father Greg in the check shirt. Now back home in Johannesburg, Wes said the shooting and mortar firing was constant. You know, the, the gunfire just didn't stop the mortars. I mean, you're talking about hundreds of mortars going off, like probably 40, 50 an, an hour. But despite the fighting getting closer and closer, the brothers are constantly supporting each other. Love you, bro. Love you, my man. <laughs> we are right, sir. At this stage, only small helicopters operated by the private security company DAG appeared to be mounting any rescue. People were getting more and more desperate, but after airlifting more than 20 people from the Amarula, DAG promised to return for more. Inside the lodge, Wes and the others are waiting to go, keeping as quiet as possible and joking about what they can take with them. As the gunfire continued, they sorted themselves into small groups and had their bags ready to go. And then they heard the helicopters leaving. We said to them, we're sitting ducks. We've got nothing to protect ourselves. We need confirmation ASAP. Using satellite phones, they repeatedly appealed for help from those in Pemba and on the Afunji Peninsula nearby, where the big gas project is. Wearing flak jackets left behind by aid agencies and with no weapons at all, they come up with a plan to break out of the lodge side gate and retrieve a weapon they think is in the parked car outside. They don't know how many insurgents are lying in wait, but they know they're surrounded. Adrian, in the blue flak jacket, volunteers to do the running and searching. What are you doing? Adrian, come. Adrian, come. It takes three runs before they come back with a single gun. F***ing right. I got it. No magic. Well done. Well done, guys. With no help apparently coming, they began packing themselves into the vehicles left at the lodge. The aim was to head out in a convoy. Adrian would drive one car. It's going to be the driver of your life, bro. Within minutes, they'd been ambushed. Several drivers and vehicles were hit and careered off the road. The brother's vehicle was amongst those who kept going, only to be ambushed a second time. He just started shouting that he's hit, he's hit, and that his leg is off um, and he can't drive. Uh, um, Someone needs to take over. Everyone was shouting at him, just keep driving as far as you can. He's like, I'm trying. A kilometer after that, um, he, was, he was just saying, I can't, I'm going, guys, I'm going. I was holding his shoulder over the bullet wound, trying to stop the blood, and I was just pumping out. I started to drive, and I was just shouting back at them to, to put the other, the other doses inside the, the bullet, the, the gunshot um, wounds. And um, was he still talking? No, he had stopped talking by that time. And I was just shouting that I love him and that I look after his family and that I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that this has happened to him. They hid in the forest until the next day before DAG helicopters rescued them, with Wes insisting they take his brother's body with them. This is the short shirt I was wearing. And this is his blood. 
This is all of his blood that was on us from me and my dad trying to save his life. People forget that. We did everything for everybody. And it felt like nobody was doing anything for us. And my brother paid the ultimate price. They just abandoned us, didn't help us. Now I'm left with this. Adrian leaves behind a wife and three young children. The Amarula Lodge where he took refuge was ransacked, with villagers saying 12 foreigners who'd stayed behind were beheaded here. They buried them beneath this tree. The militants tore through Palma, killing an unknown number, and thousands are still missing. Alex Crawford, Sky News in Mozambique.